Huwag natin kakalimutan yung of the mean na statement. Kasi pag kilimutan natin siya, we are actually pertaining to different sampling distributions. It could be sampling distribution of the median, sampling distribution of the ranges. But specifically, when we since we are done with normal distribution, we are talking about sampling distribution of the mean or precisely sigma based on the definition that I have given to you on our school book and let's just zoom it a little the mean of the sampling distribution again the mean of the sampling distribution ibig sabihin you're taking the average of the averages yeah an average of the averages when we get the average of those average that we have got, it is actually the average of the population. Okay? So when we talk about mean of the sampling distribution, of course, you're going to find all samples first before you get the sampling distribution and then you find the mean of every sample when we talk about the mean of the sampling distribution we, it's just like getting the average of the averages or average of the sample means or just simply getting the average of your population using the raw data that you have in symbols when we talk about sampling distribution we talk about mu sub x Ayan. mean of sample or sam sampling distribution and this one you're familiar with this this is the population mean of course since merong minion we could also have the variance and the standard deviation just like the population mean meron siyang katulad na population variance at population standard deviation in this case papansinin natin the variance of the sampling distribution is computed as follows kapag may nakikita kayong subscript just like this one th that is talking about the sampling distribution Since it is sigma squared, this is the variance. Tapos, etong nandito sa taas yan yung kinocompute natin ng midterms. Population variance. However, since we are going to use small n, this is what called the sample size. Baka malito kayo, yung sample size is hindi yan pareho sa number of samples. Yung number of samples and yung number of possible groupings that we could make given a certain sample size. Katulad ng ginawa natin on the previous lesson. And of course, when we are getting the standard deviation, recall lang natin, I would superimpose na lang dito, recall, standard deviation is equal to the square root variance ganun pa rin siya, it would follow kaya kung papansin nyo eto sigma na lang ibig sabihin population standard deviation and sigma and square root of n kasi hmm, nare-recall natin I would just zoom in here uh, Di ba yung variance ay sigma x squared. Equal to siya sa sigma squared over square over n. And when we get the standard deviation, we're going to get the square root of them. Since this is a perfect square, it would become sigma x. Now, 
square root of a perfect square is of course the number itself over square root of n. That's why ganun yung formula na kuha natin. Ngayon, anong sin anong silbi nitong idea na ito? First and foremost, once we have created or found the sampling distribution, we can see that most of the time as the sample size gets bigger, dito, this is that ano, ah, this is what we call the sampling sorry 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 sampling distribution so green enough natin siya tapos we have different sample sizes we actually have n equals 8 n equals 4 and n equals 2 what we can see in the graph is that the average stays the same mu stays the same kahit iba-iba yung sample size na ginagamit natin but nakadepende sa n or sa sample size natin kung kaano ka spread out yung ating distribution so if we're going to graph our sampling distribution if we're going to do it over and over and over and over and over again what would happen is that of course it would be following a normal distribution because of the next topic or what we call the central limit theorem and then the larger the the sample size, the less spread we're going to see in our sampling distribution. So, as a note, lagay natin dito. Note. The larger n is the spread is lesser. So, if we're going to create the inverse of that if the spread is lesser then there is a chance that you have a large sample size we take the contra positive of it if the spread is greater there is a high chance that you have a small sample size so yung converse naman if the or the inverse rather if the sample size is small therefore the spread would be greater kagaya na papansin natin dito so I hope you have understood this part of the lesson may katuloy pa siya mamaya